Hi everyone, when you um, begin to work on this problem, I recommend that you print out the blank worksheets that I uh, posted both in the problem and in Canvas. And follow along with me and write out the notes as we go just to help you have a resource that you can keep with you as we work through the module. And the first part of that resource is this first page here where I really want you to just review the list of accounts and where different types of accounts belong in um, this accounting equation architecture, the assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. And I built out some assets already here. These are some reviews from chapter one. Um, cash, accounts receivable. So cash is your, your first asset. You know, that's the money in the bank. It doesn't have to be green physical cash. It can be just money in your checking account and that would be counted as cash. We have accounts receivable. That's money our customers owe us. We have supplies. You know, those are the pens, pencils, papers, things that we own. We did not use them yet. That's a key, right? We own them, so they're an asset. And here are two new accounts that we'll talk about later in the in the problem. Uh, prepaid insurance and prepaid rent. Just keep the, a note of those and note that those are assets. And then these are a couple more review um, accounts here, equipment, buildings, and land. And then the last thing I did here is I grouped them into the first five here, I'm grouped into what we call current assets, and the last three I'm calling non-current assets. And really our definition here, you know, if we're thinking about um, current assets, we're going to go current assets, current assets in general. This isn't an absolute ultimate rule, but this is a good general way to learn it to start with. You know, our current assets are going to be um, assets that are used up within one year or turn to cash, used up or cashed, right, turn to cash within one year. And then we'll do the non-current Non-current assets are going to be the assets um, used for more than one year, just in general. And if you think about that, what are we saying here? Well, you're building your equipment, your land, like equipment could be trucks, it could be furniture, it could be uh, computers, generally you're going to use those for a long time, so those aren't going to be current assets. But if you think about supplies, pens and papers, you know, you're going to use them pretty quickly, so you're going to use up those resources fast so they'll be current. Accounts receivable, you're going to convert to cash fast. Your customers are going to pay you hopefully within 30 days, so accounts receivable will be current. So now I'm going to build up your liability, so um, let's take a look at the liabilities section. So here are the liabilities. Remember, liabilities are things that we owe, things that, you know, I, amounts that we owe to credit creditors. This is money that we have to pay back. Generally, you're looking for the word payable. We reviewed this in chapter one, accounts payable, notes payable. And I wrote notes payable twice, one for something we call short term, one that we call long term. Okay, so, um, and then I added one more account that we'll talk about later, deferred revenue, just like those prepaids that I told you we're going to talk about later. Keep this in mind. Just write it down. Deferred revenue is a liability account that we're going to use later. And then I split these into current liabilities and non-current. So your current liabilities would be the top three here. Non-current would be the bottom one. And generally, we're going with the same, the same rule again here. So we're going current liabilities... Right, and, and you're thinking here, money we will pay within one year. And then non-current would be the opposite, right? Non-current would be non-current liabilities is, you know, money we will pay um, more than a year from now. Okay, so you want to start separating those. And, and the other thing that you want to keep in mind here is that note payable short term. And remember that too, the short term note, it's a current liability. Why is it a current liability? Current liability because that is one year or less on the term of the note. So keep that in mind. I have, so I have the two terms here, short term, ST, and long term. You're going to separate those into two different accounts most times in most problems. You know, if it's a one year loan or less, exactly one year is short term. One year plus one day or more is going to be long term. So make sure you separate those as you go. And then finally, we'll talk about the stockholders' equity. 
So finally, stockholders' equity. Um, you know, this is basically the value of the company is the way I like to think of it. You know, what's the company worth? Your equity is your value, which is, you know, if assets equals liabilities plus your equity, if you rearrange the formula, your equity equals your assets minus your liabilities, what you have minus what you owe. That's the value of your company. And what are the components of stockholders' equity? In Chapter 1, what we said is equity, stockholders' equity is going to have common stock and retained earnings. Well, when we're doing these transactions in chapters two and three here, we want to think about retained earnings as a collection of um, multiple accounts here. Revenues, remember service revenue or sales revenue. Service revenue, you provide service. Sales revenue, you sell some goods. Um, and then your expenses, right? Um, salaries and wage expense, supplies, insurance, any blank expense, utilities, you know, you name it with the word expense on it. And what we do is we take our revenues minus our expenses, and that's kind of our scoreboard to say, how do we do? Um, how do we do as a company? Do we grow our company? We grow the value of our company um, based on our revenues minus expenses. And then if we did, we'll have net income. Revenue minus expense equals net income. That goes on the income statement. Then we go to the statement retain earnings. You subtract out your dividends. And then you end up with your retained earnings amount. So if you take all these amounts in here, they're going to fall into the retained earnings category. But what you will not be doing in Chapter 2 and 3 is you won't be um, changing the retained earnings account. You'll be changing revenue, expense, and dividend accounts instead. So let's start looking at some of these samples here as our next step. And let's actually look at the samples from Question 1 as we go. Okay, so when we look at these transactions, what you want to do is, you know, you want to keep that first page by your side so you know, um, you know, what accounts go where because we're going to figure out, do any of our asset accounts change? Do any of our liability accounts change? And do any of our equity accounts change in these transactions? Now, remember, there's a rule here. Every transaction must have at least two accounts. So what we're going to have to do when we're looking at this, we're going to read the, uh, you know, the data that's given to us, and then we're going to try to figure out, hey, what are the accounts that are affected? And there better be at least two. There could be three. There could be four. There could be 50. But there needs to be at least two. You can't have only one. And then the other thing is, see how there's that equal sign right there, equal sign? Um, this is an equation. This is a math equation. So if you put numbers on one side of an equation, you need to have the same exact numbers on the other side. So if we you know, increase our cash account, and let's do it actually right now. All right, let's increase that cash account. Why am I increasing the cash account by $20,000? Well, what happened? Each owner contributes, right there, contributes $10,000 and it tells us cash. So we, the company received $20,000 total. Remember, the owners are separate from the company. The owners contributed cash to the company. The company's bank account here is going up by $20,000, okay? The company's bank account's going up by $20,000. Whenever an investor gives us cash, you know, we're going to issue stock. That's a friendly term there. That's going to help you figure out what your other account is. But we also need to keep track of the fact that the common stock account is going up. Anytime an investor contributes money to our company, well, there's two different things that are happening. One, the bank account of the company is increasing, right? The company just received some cash. So we got to record that, that there's a change in cash of $20,000. And we also have to record, hey, how do we get that cash? Well, now the value of the company is $20,000, and we record that in common stock to show this is the amount of money that our investors contributed to the company. Remember, these are in dollars too. So you know, we could have issued 100 shares of stock. Um, to the investors, that doesn't matter. What matters is that that stock is worth the amount that the investors contributed, the twenty thousand dollars. So that's um, that's the first one. Let's look at the second one. We borrow five thousand dollars cash from a local bank using a one-year note, and you want to ask yourself. And usually, the first thing I want to ask myself on any of these any of these transactions is, "Hey, did my bank account go up or down?" That's the first thing I want to ask. It could be no. If no, don't put anything in there. But if your bank account goes up or down, right? We're going to change the cash account. Did it go up or down? In this case, yeah, it did. Cash count went up by $5,000. Um, how do we get it? Do we owe any money as a result? So that's another question you want to ask. You know, do we get any other assets? No. Do we owe any money as a result of this? Well, it looks like we borrowed money from the bank. I think the bank's going to want that money back. So, of course, I'm going to want to show that I owe that money. And any money that you owe is going to be in an account called a payable. And in this case, we're going to call it notes payable. Remember I told you, you have to separate your notes payable into either short-term or long-term? Well, this is exactly a one-year note. One-year notes are going to be short-term. And then the next thing you want to ask yourself is, do I owe more or less money? And as a result of borrowing right now, I owe more money 
So I'm going to increase my notes payable by $5,000. And if you look, I'm equal. I have $5,000 on the left side of the equal sign, $5,000 on the right side of the equal sign. And I'm just putting a little plus here. When you're entering the problem in Connect, you don't have to put a plus. You just put the number in as a positive number. Next, pay $10,000 cash to buy a truck. First question you want to ask, did my bank account change? Yes, it did. Bank account changed. It went down though, I'm gonna put it in as a negative number, so when you're in Connect, make sure you put that in as a negative. $10,000 to show you my cash account is going down by that amount. Right? It doesn't say that's how much I have in my account, it's saying that's what changed in the cash account. When we're doing these transactions, we're saying what changes? Cash went down by $10,000. And what do we get as a result here? Do we get any other assets? Yeah, guess what, we got a truck. And we're gonna call that equipment. My equipment asset is going up by $10,000. What I, the amount that I paid for the truck is the amount that the equipment is worth. And then the next question you want to ask on this is, do we owe any money here? Um, I don't. We don't owe any new money, or we owe, don't owe less money. Um, there's no common stock. Investors didn't contribute any money here. We didn't earn any revenue. We didn't sell anything. We didn't use the truck yet. If you have an expense, you need to use something. So there's no expense because we didn't use the truck. We just bought it. So there's nothing on the right side of this equation. You can leave these blank. And also, you'll know that since I only added $0 in assets, right? I took out $10,000 and brought back another $10,000. My net effect is $0 on my assets here, right? I got a $0 net effect here on the assets. So that means I don't need to put anything on the right side of the equation. Zero on the left, zero on the right. Let's go to the next one. We purchased $400 worth of grooming supplies on account. There's your keyword. You know, keep in mind on credit would be another keyword that would be very similar. We receive a bill. That's a nice little clue here. And we're going to pay the bill later. That tells us I did not pay any cash. So that was the first question I always want you to ask. Did we pay cash or receive cash? The answer is no. Didn't. Did not. So now we got to kind of dig a little deeper. Well, the first thing I would do is do any of my assets increase here? Did we receive anything that we own that's worth something? And it looks like we did, right? We own these supplies at this point. So I'm going to have my supply asset. Supplies asset's going to go up by $400. Uh, we did not use the supplies, so it's not a supply expense. If it, if we use the supplies, it would be an expense. But here we just own it. We bought them and we own them. We put them in storage. So we own $400 worth of supplies. Do we owe any money as a result? And that's that on credit, on account part. We do owe money. It's a payable. What kind of payable? Did we sign a note, right? What's the difference between notes payable and accounts payable? Did we sign a note and is there a payment plan? Is there interest? Did we take it from the bank? And the answer is no. Um, our supplier just gave us a bill and we're going to pay it, you know, maybe later, probably like in 30 days. So we're kind of informal here and that's going to be accounts payable. So accounts payable and is it increasing or decreasing? And the answer is accounts payable is going up. We owe $400 more as a result here. Right, and then finally, let's see the last one here. We pay $600 in advance. Here's our new one. Pay $600 in advance to Geico to cover insurance for his truck from January 1st to January to June 30th. Well, the first question you want to ask is, did you pay any money or did you receive any money? And that's, let's get that easy way out, easy um, account out of the way. We paid $600 in cash. Cash is going down by $600. So now the next question is, did we use up this insurance yet? And this is the theme I want you to remember. When you have an expense, you need to use up something. And if you use up something, you would have, say, insurance expense, and it would be in the stockholder's equity section. But look, we bought it on Jan January 1st. We paid for this policy, and it's going to cover the insurance starting you know, pretty much now through the next six months. But we did not use this insurance yet. We prepaid it. We paid it in advance, and that is where we're going to use this prepaid insurance account. So prepaid insurance is going up by $600. you got to remember this concept. You cannot have an expense unless you use up the resource. Even though I spent money today, I did not use the insurance yet. So I need to increase this prepaid insurance asset. And that's something you're going to have to get comfortable with as we go through um, the next few weeks here in the class. Prepaid insurance is an asset. That means basically we're putting $600 worth of insurance in a bucket. It's basically value that we can use over the next six months. So those are your first five transactions. You know, you'll want to enter these into Connect, but make sure you understand what we're doing and why we're doing each of these pieces. And you may want to review chapter two and three, 
you know, not with the debit and credit part, but just the analysis part, just if, if some of this information is unclear. Thanks, everybody.